What's up, guys, and welcome to the Tim's Sports Talk, where we got the NBA playoff recap. We got KP with us today. How you doing, KP? Man, I'm doing great. Master Class is going well. We got NBA basketball to talk about. I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, we had a couple of decent games. Of course, we had two blowouts. Uh, the final game was not very fun to watch, but uh, I guess if you're a Laker or LeBron fan, I guess it was, but... <laughs> Other than that, it wasn't that great. (laughs) (laughs) All right, but of course, we're going to start with our game one. We have the Bucks versus the Magic. The Magic take it 121 106. Sorry, not the Magic. The Bucks take it 121 106. Excuse me. Giannis had 31 points, 15 rebounds in 34 minutes again. Uh, Middleton had 21 points and 10 rebounds. Uh, you had Vucevic from um, the Magic was the lone bright spot at 31 points and 11 rebounds. So, or was it the rebounds? No, I'm second guessing myself. Yep, it was rebounds. Yeah, it was rebounds. Also, he had seven assists. So, the Magic tried to hang out there. there. Yeah, the Magic tried to hang out there, hang out in there. Excuse me, with through three quarters, alternating leads throughout the third quarter. But it was the fourth quarter. The Bucks started on a 15 to 0 run. And just completely blew this game wide open. Uh, what do you think about this game? I mean, I I think I, I agree with you with the uh, the Magic fighting and like their you know competitive spirit. But like the Bucks are just too good. They couldn't yeah. stop them. They had too many points uh, in the paint. And I think uh, when they had this chance, that they, they were getting knocked down shooters too in the, in the outside. So uh, kudos to the Bucks. I think this one's over. Um, I'm upset that I said four zero and not four one for whatever reason. You know. But <laughs> all of us saw magic just coming uh, out firing yeah, right, in game like, one. Clearly I was just, I don't know. Crazy yeah. Speaking of shooters, Matthews, <laughs> uh, he was, he only shot six shots. They were all three pointers. And in that first half, uh, at the end of the second quarter, he made two three pointers with like 10 seconds to go. He made one and then they got the ball back and came back and made another one. So yeah, he was, he was big for the bucks in that first half. But uh, I also wanted to just bring up this. How did Eric Bledsoe be on a team <laughs> that won by 15 points, but you have a plus minus on the game of minus 16? <laughs> like, that's that was blew my mind. I thought that was a weird stat that you on a team that clearly won the game, but yet you were just... Well, he also went three for eleven, zero for two from three point line. Right. Like he did have one nice play though. Uh, Bledsoe actually got the steal. Not Bledsoe, excuse me. Lopez got the steal and uh, passed it up to him, and he had a behind the back split between two defenders, reverse layup that uh, on a fast break that was really nice. But that was pretty much the lone highlight from him all game. Uh, you had uh, at the end of the third quarter, I thought it was funny that you had uh, <clears throat> Kim Birch from the magic he was guarding Giannis at the end of the third quarter with like 10 seconds left and he gave him like 10 feet (laughs) and it was like you are not driving so Giannis finally was like okay with three seconds left pulled up from three-point land bam knocked it down if you're gonna give it to me but he did go one for five for three-point line so that was the one three (laughs) he made all day it's a great highlight but yeah I I like the full (laughs) stat line not you know, one play. I would do the same thing. I would guard him at the block only, and be like, you know what? If you're gonna dunk on me. I get it. You're gonna jump over me. I get it. But I'll let you shoot a three. Giannis could have had a bigger day. I counted at least three times where he. I thought it was clearly an and one that he made, and he's looking at the refs like, "What's going on?" And they were not calling the fouls for him. Uh, what was his? Uh, he only got to the line six times. It went two for six from the line. I. Th- think that easily could have been increased based on how much he was inside the paint uh, he was 14 for 21 from the field only shot five threes which is probably too much for him but point is he was 16 shots inside the paint and only got to the line six times i think that was a, probably a little low for <laughs> what was going I mean, on i feel like some of these referees are either working the system somehow to make some money on the side or they uh they have to balance out like the the superstars and like the the next level the next tier superstars and like they just balance out all the fouls because uh looking back on some tapes i'm just like man this guy's getting hit and he's just not getting the call like today i feel like the trailers just got hit a couple times tonight and did not get called so we'll talk about that later but yeah yeah, man i don't know what's going on in the nba i don't know these refs all got picked so (laughs) they're the best of the best 
<laughs> Fair enough. Well, yep, I believe this series will end in two days from now. Bucks will put a hurting on the Magic to put this series to bed and look towards the Heat is the matchup they'll have after this. And yeah. that game will come later. Next up, we have game two. We have the Thunder versus Rockets. The Thunder, even the series, two apiece behind their two guards. And Schroeder was huge off the bench. He got 30 points off the bench. Uh, he only had, I believe, three assists. And I thought this was also a weird stat line for Chris Paul. He had 26 points, but only three assists. These point guards were looking to score. They were having their own Russell Westbrook moment. I feel like they're like, no, no, no. I'm not passing today. I'm getting to the lane and I'm yeah. scoring. So my time, my <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Paul went ten for nineteen from the field. Schroeder went ten for sixteen. Four for seven from three for Schroeder, uh, including a big one at the end of the third. He uh, shot a buzzer beater uh, to in the third quarter. Well, if you if, let me just interject real quick. If you want to know about stats, okay. Four of the five uh, Oklahoma City players ended as a negative today, and they won. Four out <laughs> of the five starters, all, yeah. But but all four people on the bench, positive. Your bench play matters. Just gonna put that out there. Oh yeah. Your bench player, keep playing, man. Like don't don't give up. I hate that. Like just because I'm not a starter, don't play hard. I hate that. Sorry, just a little coaching. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, well, I guess but. Schroeder has accepted his role that Chris Paul is the point guard of this team, but he is making some noise in the last two games. He had 26 last game, I believe. Like, Schroeder's been huge in these two wins. And I think in the uh, two losses, he was, like, around 10 or less points. So it seems like the o Oklahoma City is running through Schroeder. If Schroeder, Schroeder needs to play big for uh, this team to win the game. But another big portion of this game was – is uh I never say his name right Le Guintes Dort his last name's Dort and he's been playing fantastic defense on James Harden James Harden uh had 32 points which seems like oh wait how good was his defense really but he needed 25 shots to get there and he also only got to the line five times Harden is one of the most free throw centric players in the league and only getting to the free throw game. yeah <laughs> And only getting to the line five times is absolutely huge in a three-point game, which it was a three-point game at the end of the game, but you had a uh, – it was a house from Houston. Yeah, Eddie yeah. yeah, Eddie House. He took, got the ball from three-quarters court with 1.3 seconds and just chucked it down and made it a backboard in at the buzzer to make it a three-point game. So it was really a six-point game at the end, which – Again, led behind these guards, Chris Paul and Schroeder both had buckets and free throws down the stretch. Uh, Schroeder had a nice drive. Chris Paul had a nice pull-up jumper from about 15 feet out. And it, it was these guards are playing huge for this Thunders team. Yeah, and low-key, they're kind of like doing the same. Like you say, all like people copy the Houston small ball. I think they're doing a, a decent job of like playing just like with their strengths. But their strength right now is iso ball, which is kind of weird. Because they had 42 made shots on 16 and 16 assists, so they're really just going one on one kind of ISO or getting offensive rebounds. I mean, their buckets are coming in a lot of different ways. So mm -hmm. if they get clicking on offense and they like gel with each other a little bit more, I think and less scrappy, like they they just scrap for everything. So like they get all those garbage buckets and things. I mean, they're I, I don't know. Kudos to them for yeah. Well, watching this game, they it was grim. It was looking real grim. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Oh uh, well, watching these games. Uh, especially the game today, they went with a small ball lineup. I know Gallinari is like six foot ten, but he does not play yeah. like a big man. No, and I mean, uh, Schroeder played thirty one minutes, and Stephen Adams played twenty six. Uh, Chris Paul mm -hmm. played thirty seven. So Dort's only six three. He played thirty five minutes. You have a shooting guard in uh, Gillis Alexander. So they went with a small ball lineup a lot today, and so. That's, I guess, how you have to match Houston is you have to play play there, play to them, which is odd because I was saying after the two games that you can't play that way. Like, you, you got to play big against them. But I also did say that they didn't have a big to play against them in this. Like, Steven Adams is not an offensive powerhouse. So, right. like, you didn't right. have somebody that, like, an Embiid or uh, Anthony Davis that can really punish you in the middle. So, Kudos to them. They made adjustments. 
we talked about the refs earlier, like whenever you play a small ball lineup and you're that big, as soon as you turn your shoulder and somebody falls, I mean, you're going to get that one out of three times if you're a little guy. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to call that charge on the big guy, posting up too hard, whatever. We saw it in, uh, I think it was game game three, the last game. Uh, Steven Adams just cleared out real quick. They called an offensive foul for him hooking, but it's like if that was a you know seven-footer behind him, that doesn't get called. So yeah. it's just one of those things. They got to flatline it. They're flattening the curve on when they call fouls and when they don't. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're – fair enough because Houston only had 10 free throws on the game. Right. I mean, that's insane coming from Houston. They, they're used to at least 25 as a team, you know, yeah. 10 to 15 and coming from Harden. 28. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's, that's, very strange. That's very right there. So – very cool. Well, yep. Well, it's very exciting. We both had this series going seven. Uh, KP had OKC. I had Houston in seven. So we both predicted this one going the distance, and it is living up to expectations. <laughs> well, Thanks. one, the next series did not go the distance. We have another sweep in the East. We should have had four sweeps if the Bucks didn't mess up in game one, but he had the so. sweep. 99 87 today against the Pacers. It was a low scoring game when you compare it to the bubble. Excuse me, the bubble. Um, the right. Heat took the lead in the second quarter, led the rest of the way. I don't think they, the Pacers got back within five throughout the rest of the game. Um, and it was kind of a weird game for the Heat because nobody really had a great offensive day. You had 23 points out of, uh, uh, excuse me, Dragic. Is that his name? Crap. Oh. Dragic. Yeah, Dragic. Good. To hit. Mix up in my head, but he he went ten for twenty one, one for six from three point land, like so twenty three points. But it didn't wasn't really an efficient night. And outside of that, you had a sixteen points out of Hero. Like it was kind of an odd game, a low scoring game for both teams. But the big story of this is that the Pacers got nothing from the bench. You talked about the bench last game; yeah. they had three right. points out of their bench this game, and. Out of their 87, 81 came from Warren, Turner, Brogdon, and Oladipo. Like, they're four bigs. Like, right. you only had right. scoring coming out of four players. And honestly, I'm surprised Justin Holliday didn't get in there a little bit, too. I mean, he, he didn't even really shoot that much. He must have just had an off night because he was knocking down some big threes in the last game, um, if I remember correctly. But, yeah, getting three points off your bench, you're not going to win a lot of basketball games <laughs> that way. And only – was it, it – is this – oh, wait. I'm sorry, I need to go all set. Okay, they shot 11 free throws. 11. Freaking Heat, Heat only, sco- only shot 14. I, like, I don't know. I don't know. The big the last deal... Game had, last game had 34 free throws, or 28 free throws on one side. That's more than both these teams combined. Right, <laughs> and then to contrast, the Heat had 51 bench points coming from theirs, and... The other big stat to look at this game, because neither team really sh- shot the ball well. The Heat had 26.5% from three-point land. Uh, the Pacers actually shot 37.8, but you had a contrast on the re- boards of 60 rebounds for the Heat to 34 from the Pacers, including 17 offensive rebounds for the Heat. That was the big deal, because you had Bam Adebayo with 14 points and 19 rebounds with six offensive. That was... It was all about the boards in this game. Yeah, and I think that, honestly, this is going to be um, their bread and butter if they want to beat Milwaukee. They're going to have to hunker down the defense, finish every possession with a rebound. Um, you got to limit uh, you know, Giannis as much as you can, obviously, mm-hmm. and then just roll the dice with how it goes. Because like, you're looking at their scores, and they, they, I'm not saying they don't score. They, they had 124 points in one game, but 109 and 113, I mean, those aren't you know crazy numbers for this bubble like you said earlier. So their defense is locking in, and I think that they're um, they're going to do well because they're holding their opponent. I mean, under under a hundred um, or at right at a hundred, pretty consistently right now. Yep. Well, you do have some bad news coming if you're a Heat fan. Is that Jimmy Butler did uh, like suffer a left shoulder strain and left the game in the third quarter. Uh, he only had six points of the night. It seems like his shoulder was bothering him already, but he ended up leaving the game. Um, I think we lost KP here for a second, but let's see if I can uh, bring him back real quick. You there, KP? Uh-oh. Let's go ahead and disconnect him. We'll bring him back real quick.
Maybe we won't bring him back. Let's get out of this. Come back into it. You there, KP? Right. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Okay. We lost you a little bit. That's all right. Um, no, we were just talking about Jimmy Butler. He did suffer the injury in the third quarter, so he only had six points on the night, so it seems like he was already struggling. Uh, he's obviously a big part of that defense, very high-efficiency defensive player. So, uh, yeah, if, if they want any chance to beat the Heat, or excuse me, beat the Bucks, they yeah. will need Jimmy to come back. Absolutely. Definitely need your all-star. And the sweep helps. They should have some rest before playing the Bucks, and the Bucks are still playing, uh, so that they'll the Bucks will play in two days from now to try to end the Magic. All right, we now we go to the final game of the night. We have the Trailbla- Lakers versus Trailblazers, a 135-115 blowout. And honestly, it wasn't even that close. Like, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's crazy well, to say with a 20-point game. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of upset about it because the Lakers were on pace for 160, and not just through one quarter, but through two quarters. And they didn't get there. So um, I'm just glad I didn't put money on that. I lost or put something on that. But yeah. well, the... You know who definitely lost was Charles Barkley. So if you want to you mention that real quick. Yep. <laughs> Charles Barkley did his thing again where he guaranteed. Whoop! Whoop! Yeah. Guaranteed the Trailblazers <laughs> win. And he said it is Custard's, not Custer, Custard's last stand. And the Trailblazers <laughs> will win. And at halftime, the Lakers were up 29 points, 80 to 51. And Charles then learned that Custer did not win that battle. <laughs> Bruh. Okay. First of all, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to let the Custer, Custard thing slide because, first of all, I can't pronounce anything correct anyway. Uh, the second thing is, no one said he was good at history. All right. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you're not. Uh, in sports betting or sports, like you need to get in there and just watch the pregame show, and immediately as soon as it happens, like hit up Vegas because that's just that's <laughs> easy money. I'm just I'm gonna let that go. I, I don't even need to talk about the game. That's that's just all I want. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Well, we are gonna talk about the game, and LeBron was fantastic all game really when he was in, but in the first half, eight for nine shooting, twenty two points in us. Uh, excuse me, 18 minutes, seven assists, three for four from three points. Uh, and he had a nice block in transition over the uh, yep. crap. Who's number one for the trailblazers. I don't uh, know. He's a young guy. I actually don't know his name either. Yeah. Uh, must've been this, uh, was it Adams? Uh, no, that's number 10 crap. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Point is we'll though. We'll yeah. Uh, but he had a nice block there, and he ended the game with 30 points and 10 assists. Uh, he did not play much in the fourth quarter. I think he played the first two minutes, and they ended up taking him out uh, because it was – I think they had a highest lead as 38 points in the third quarter. Uh, yeah. So Kobe Knight – His name – go ahead. But Kobe Knight, uh, they – Lakers started up 15 nothing to start the game and it, which included two even like two missed free throws from the trailblazers like they could not hit anything they were getting anything. no calls carmelo was getting really frustrated because he thought he got fouled a couple of times so they were getting no calls no nothing they couldn't make a bucket uh also damian lillard and cj mccollum decided that they were going to try to attack the best shot blocker in the league and anthony <laughs> davis all night and of course that did not turn out well um, but it, a cool thing out of Kobe Knight, you did have a Lakers up twenty four to eight to start yeah. this game at one point. Uh, it's it seems he was pulling the strings, pulling the strings up there to get yeah. this game. I, I'm I'm just really upset. First of all, that that uh, player's name was Anthony Simmons. I don't, Anthony don't Simmons. Know why we need to? Yeah, whatever. Um, but I'm really upset because today was supposed to be the first day like we had kids in our building for school. Uh-huh. And I was like so hyped that it was gonna be Kobe Day, and we're gonna like celebrate, watch some highlights and different things like during. But instead, we did not have school this week. We have uh, teacher training all week, so I had to sit through meetings and all that. Nothing that was boring or anything, but 
It was. It was. Really cool to see that. It was. <laughs> it was. Hey, you, you said it. I'm not. That's, 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 not that's, not that's not on me. I'm still going for ten year virtual. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. and for yeah. the the Trailblazers, you cannot have Nurkic being your highest score at twenty points, and expect to beat the Lakers. Like that is not going and to be the recipe was, to win. Okay. So we talked about this a little bit too, but like. <clears throat> How many technical fouls were there today? Like, why is this such a like? This is such a common thing now. I feel like, and I I don't like. It. I know you don't like it, um, but I I just don't. I don't understand like why they're so quick with them a lot of times. I, I don't know. Especially yeah, it was what game like this. We get back in, but like, yeah, was it Dwight Howard and Carmelo Anthony got tied up again underneath the basket, and Dwight Howard ended up getting called for yep. the technical foul like it, very quickly. Um, yeah, it, it yep. they do seem very. Uh, I think the only one, one I so. really agreed with was like CJ McCollum didn't get the foul and he went over and basically was yelling in the ref's face and wasn't letting the ref even call. Like the ref was trying to make hand signals to the bench and he's basically standing in between the, the, why well, I can't think of what they're called, basically where the other ref sit to record Baseline, everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, it was not good for, uh, the technical fouls, lots of them. You had Carmelo Anthony also got one from the bench. Uh, you had LeBron yeah. James did not get I mean, a technical Nurkic foul did. when arguing. Well, he got a delay uh, of game. Frank Vogel did, though. Uh, Frank Vogel did. Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah I, can, Le- I mean, I think Terry Stotts got one, too. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to say that I agreed with LeBron when he was arguing with the refs there because they have a rule that you cannot challenge a play that was not called. Right. So they challenge the Nurkic foul on LeBron. So Mm -hmm. they said Nurkic went over the back on LeBron. Well, push LeBron. Yep. 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 So then they went and looked at the review and they saw Morris was actually the one that pushed Nurkic into LeBron, which Mm -hmm. I see to say, all right, no foul from Nurkic, but they went as far as to actually give Morris the foul which ended up being his right. fifth personal, which wasn't a big deal because they were up by 30 or something like that. But <laughs> it was still right. just an interesting idea of like, so in the rules that you could not challenge a play that was not called, but when you challenge a play that was called, you can then make a foul on someone else that was not called on that play. And right. I think that's right. where LeBron was getting frustrated, where it was like, wait a minute. Okay, you could say no foul because we're looking at the one play, but you can't add a foul on top of it because that's not in the rules. Right. And he, I think he was really arguing, like, why is he shooting free throws right now? I mean, I get, like, the whole, like, bonus thing. But, like, um, I feel like if you're going to if you're gonna do that, you're going to take a foul away from a player, add it to another player, it should be ball out and then just, like, play. Like, almost like a jump ball kind of situation like you would in high school. But, you know, that, that player, that team retains possession because you don't know what could have happened. Like, I don't know. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. If they're in the, if they're in the penalty, it's a defensive foul because uh, Portland had the – uh, ball. Mm-hmm. It was an offensive. Re- it would have been an offensive rebound for Nurkic, um, but at the same time, I just don't think it would have, should have been called because it's not in the rules. Now, I guess should it be in the rules? I, mean, yeah. I don't mind that. I, I like because there was a play. Uh, we didn't talk about this yesterday. It was a play where uh, Murray for Denver last night in a close game when in the final minute clearly got fouled mm-hmm. by Rudy Gobert from the Jazz. And he yep. came down on them, and because it was not called, they could not challenge it, and they end up right. fouling Mitchell. And like they're looking at everybody, like they're looking at the refs, like what's the what the heck? I mean, he clearly came down on my arm, and you know if Mitchell got sniffed at, like, like you know you looked at Mitchell wrong. He was he got to the free throw line eighteen times yesterday. Mitchell did where so it yeah, was I mean, that's, it that's, was tough. I don't get it. Yeah, there needs to be. I mean, there needs some kind of like consistency or something in that. Um, for the replay, but I mean, I guess they've been as far as like the rule actually reads, they've been pretty consistent up to this point. So I'm not gonna really argue that. There's well, there's a lot of things that we wish could be better, obviously. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> All right, well, that is the update for the day. Did you have anything else that you wanted to add about any of these no, games? Man. Uh, I'm just I want these West series to hurry up and, and finish out. To be honest, but. Um, I'm excited for Clippers Mavs tomorrow. I can't wait for that game. I think. That's well, we didn't get to talk uh, last night. How'd you like that uh, Luca step back three for the it's win? Funny. Wor- working my second job, I get back to the store and all of a sudden I look at the TV, game winner. I'm like, oh my god, I freaked out. Because <laughs> awesome. like the last update I got was they're going to over t- overtime, right? Yep. Yeah. And then yeah, and 
That's awesome. We can get off here. It's fine. I'll, I'll reminisce later. It's all good. No, I just wanted to ask you about it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me, KP. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end. Please leave any comments down there, any uh, updates. Oh, the one thing I forgot to mention, actually, before we get out of here, is the fact that Damian Lillard actually left the game with a weird ankle oh, injury, yeah. ankle tweak. Uh, like, yeah, I almost, that's huge. Where, uh, Getting beat up, yeah. Yeah, it's like where the Trailblazers, I mean, they're already, I think, out of it anyway. I mean, the Lakers, I think you said earlier, are 13-1. and one. In series that they lead three to one, um, most series yep. don't come back from three to one anyway. So I think they were going to lose, but I did have this series going six, and for me personally, that injury is going to be huge <laughs> if I want Trailblazers to yeah. steal one more game. Well, I I feel like it it wasn't anything like super serious. It didn't look like, and like I feel like they were like, okay, we're down thirty, like let's just get our star out of the game, fight for another day, kind of thing. I don't I don't know. If he was favoring serious, it. I mean, he was favoring I mean, it hard. Luca hopped all the way back to the locker room on one foot. Well, I, I, <laughs> I told you this at the time, like, and I've talked about this in my life. It's different. I know, but it's different pain tolerances. Like Luca couldn't handle it because he was like, you know, scared about it. Damien's, you know, he's probably more experienced. With I don't that. think it hurt. I think it hurt initially for Luca, and he's like, "Crap, I just hurt my ankle." But when he was hopping back, I don't think it hurt much. I just did, don't think he he didn't realize that he could put pressure on it. Like I think he thought. I can't put pressure on it. Right. I, just, two, I different, two different two different pain tolerances. I got you. I guess pain tolerances. I don't think it's <laughs> necessarily think. pain tolerance. Like I just think it's a like you don't realize how bad you mess it up. You think you mess it up worse than you actually did is what I think. But because Lillard didn't so, twist his ankle on the play that the in question, he kind of like it kind of like tweaked, mm-hmm. but it like it. Where you look at Kyle Lowry and you look at uh, Luca, they they twisted their ankle bad, so it's kind of weird what even happened to Dame. It's kind of interesting to see bet, what comes out of that. Like stiff, I bet it's really stiff. That's what I bet. So whatever well, that means. Doc KP, <laughs> Doc KP here. All right, well, now we're done. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Leave any comments down there. Let us know what you guys think about these first-round series. And subscribe to the channel, like the video, share with your friends. And thank you. And till next time, sit.